Hello everyone, welcome to Chemistry Art. So in this video, we will see that how to do titration of two solution, acid based titration of uh, unknown NaOH solution and the non solution, non molarity solution of oxalic acid. It is M by 20 molar oxalic acid solution. So uh, we required some uh, glasswares like a pipette, funnel, then uh, conical flask, and uh, we required burette. Then, uh, very important, we required uh, phenolphthalein solution. This is a phenolphthalein indicator. Okay, so let's start the experiment. So, our aim in this is we have to find out the molarity of NaOH and with the help of M by 20 molar oxalic acid solution. Okay. First of all, we have to fill burette with NaOH solution, which is unknown with the help of funnel like this. Okay. So add over NaOH, see to it that your cork is closed and uh, here that uh, below part of the cork is also filled okay so to fill it we need to open the cork so the extra solutions uh, will be taken out from that side and no air bubble should be here here you can see that no air bubble is there and now again you have to fill it you have to make it zero so add slide more solution then zero scale and then after extra solution you need to take out and lower meniscus you have to match with the zero okay here the lower meniscus should be matched with the zero so like this you have to take out extra solution and uh, see to it that your uh, burette is at your eye level okay so you will get exact reading so now it's zero Okay, NOH is zero and no air bubbles are there below the cork. Okay, so your is ready. Now take 10 ml oxalic acid solution. Okay, this is oxalic acid solution. We will take 10 ml oxalic acid by sucking in a pipette. Okay, so in on pipette, this pipette is of 10 ml. Above the marking, you have to suck up the solution and then after slowly release the pressure of your finger. So the solution will start removing from the pipette and you have to again keep pressure of your finger when the solution reaches to the marking. So here it is actually 10 ml and add immediately into the conical flask like this. Now, if some droplets are remain into the pipette, you can uh, take out like this. See, hold the pipette like this and uh, apply pressure with the help of finger. So extra solution will be removed, means droplet will be fall down into the conical flask. So now you are having exactly 10 ml. and you have to add the phenolphthalein indicator. The property of the phenolphthalein indicator is it will show you a pink color in basic medium and in acidic medium it will be colorless. Okay, so this phenolphthalein when we will add in the solution of oxalic acid because of this oxalic acid is acidic. Okay, so the solution will remain colorless. But as a solution will become basic, it will show pink color, it will show light pink color. So this is oxalic acid 10 ml with phenolphthalein indicator. Now we will add NaOH into the oxalic acid to titrate, to neutralize. Okay, so we will start neutralization reaction. Okay, and it will change the color when it will be mild basic because in neutral condition also phenolphthalein is not showing color okay 
so suppose the ph is 7.1 at a time it will show light pink color so it will be our end point okay so we have to stop addition of the solution when the color change from the colorless to light pink color okay so we are going to start addition very slowly start addition and uh, here stir continuously conical flask and you can take a white background so you can clearly see the color change of the solution here you can see that when the drop is falling down it is giving a pink color but immediately it is disappearing you have to continuously add drop wise till the constant stable light pink color is coming okay so like this you have to add see when the drop is uh, mixed at that time it is showing light pink color but disappearing because the still solution is acidic okay so now you have to slow down because uh, the color may come anytime the stable color the stable light pink color may come anytime and it is our end point very carefully you have to add because one drop will give the continue pink color okay so here i can see that you can see that also that the color has came and you have to wait for 15 to 30 second that color is disappearing or not so you can see that the color is becoming light and uh, yes it is going to be disappear very very light pink color is there. So actually my solution or I can say that uh, my oxalic acid is neutralized but one more drop I will add and uh, yes with this drop I will get the very light pink color and it is stable light pink color it will, it will not change it will not disappear again so now I have to check out it how much solution is used on a bure so here i can see that it is uh, exactly 10 ml okay so i have to check out lower minister so it is 10.1 okay so this is my first reading it is 10.1 and like this we have to take total four readings and from that we have to take a uh, repeated reading means Concordant reading. So now, after taking another three readings, we will see the calculation and calculate the molarity and the strength of NaOH solution. Okay, so let's start the calculation. Here, this is the observation table. Okay, and in the observation table, see here it's a burette reading. Two burette readings we have to uh, note down. First, initial reading means when we are starting the titration. At that time, you have to check out that what is the reading. So as you know that that uh, initially we are having the 0.0, .0 ml, and then after when we are completing the titration, means the end point. What is end point? End point is colorless to light pink color. So at that time, what is the reading of burette? We have to note down. And so volume used by the titration volume used of NaOH okay it is difference between the final reading and initial reading so final reading we are having the 10.1 and initial was 0, 0.0 ml so the volume used in a first titration it is 10.1 ml now you have to do the same procedure you have to take uh, in a burette NaOH in a conical flask 10 ml oxalic acid and same procedure you have to follow okay and at that time if you are continue with the last reading okay then you can write initial reading is 10.1 and the final reading whatever it comes now i have taken four readings second time it comes 20.2 ml and so the difference 20.2 minus 10.1 is 10.1 again okay third time when i took reading the 20.2 
and then after initial reading was 20.2 and the final reading 30.1 okay so difference is 9.9 .9. and the fourth time when i have started the initial reading were the last reading means 30.1 uh, 30.1 and 40.1 ml is a final reading so difference were 10.0 ml another thing you can do one thing every time if you are uh, starting from zero means first reading you have taken and then after again you are feeling buried and uh, you are making zero then you can write down here 0.0, .0 ml and then the final reading will be of whatever your reading will come okay so you can do uh, practical means uh, every reading continue with the final reading so at the time you have to uh, take a difference between the final and initial and you can do another thing you can do every time 0, 0.0 ml as an initial reading means at that time you have to fill the view rate okay now we are having four readings here so out of this four reading what reading we have to take in a calculation so the reading means concordant reading we have to take and concordant reading means what whatever two or three readings are the same that reading we have to take so you can see here these two readings are same here 10.1 10.1 then 9.9 .9 and 10 okay so here two readings are same so that reading i will take here 10.1 ml okay so 10.1 ml of uh, naoh is used and that reading we have to take in a calculation so here the formula the calculation of the molarity of NaOH the formula is n1 m1 v1 is equal to n2 m2 v2 so where n1 m1 and v1 n it's a n factor of any one solution uh, the same solutions molarity and the same solutions volume okay so suppose we are taking uh, n1 means one as the uh, oxalic acid okay and two as the uh, NaOH so n2 means uh, uh, n factor of the NaOH molarity of the NaOH and the volume of the NaOH so n factor of the oxalic acid molarity of the oxalic acid and the volume of the oxalic acid and here n2 n2 means n factor of NaOH m2 means molarity of NaOH and uh, v2 means volume of NaOH okay so we need to find out the molarity of NaOH we want to find out the molarity of NaOH so we can write like this m molarity of NaOH is equals to molarity of NaOH so this n factor of oxalic acid into molarity of oxalic acid into volume of oxalic acid divided by okay this n factor and the volume will come this side okay so n factor of NaOH into the volume of NaOH okay now what is the n factor what is the molarity and what is the volume of oxalic acid we know so n factor of oxalic acid is 2 okay molarity of oxalic acid so we have taken m by 20 molar so 1 by 20 into volume of oxalic acid we have taken 10 ml oxalic acid so volume of oxalic acid will be 10 ml okay then n factor of NaOH it is 1 and volume used in a titration of NaOH it is this reading 10.1 whatever corrodent reading we have taken okay so this 10.1 we have to take here okay so here I write 10.1 ml and whatever the answer is coming it is my molarity of NaOH and here when you will solve this you will get 0 0.099 molar this is the molarity of the given unknown NaOH solution okay so we got the molarity another thing we need to find out it is strength okay so strength of NaOH is equal to molarity into molecular mass of NaOH molar mass of NaOH so molarity is 0 
and molar mass we know that it is 40. So our strength of NaOH will be 3.96 gram per liter. Strength of the NaOH will be 3.96 gram per liter. So the experiment was to find out the molarity of NaOH solution and strength of NaOH solution and we got 0.099 molarity of NaOH means it is almost 0.1 you can also write as a 0.1 molar okay 0.1 molar solution is given to you you can say that okay because 0.99 means 0.1 only and here 3.96 means you can say that approximately 4 gram of NaOH in 1 liter solution is dissolved Okay?